Holy cow, what a crazy day it has been in the markets. Big dump. Buyers stepped in, bought that dip pretty hard. So we're going to be looking at the technical, seeing just what the heck is happening with Bitcoin and, of course, the wider crypto markets at the moment. Also, some big news out of China regarding a sort of a minor crisis that we saw, but also some really interesting words from some government officials in China. Also, some big altcoin news. We're going to be talking about Polygon, Elrond. Daffy and much much more so make sure to stick around for the whole video in case you're new around here my name's lark every day i make videos talking about cryptocurrencies talking about investing covering all the hottest and the latest so if that is something you want to learn more about make sure you subscribe to the channel and also click on the bell to know when i put out a new video okay so let's go ahead and take a look here at the charts first so this is the bitcoin daily chart you can see of course that massive massive wick it's like a five thousand dollar wick here absolutely crazy to see how low the price of bitcoin went yesterday on that sort of flash crash all the liquidations and stuff came in the cascading effect that we see happen so frequently in these markets the good news as i was talking about yesterday and of course how has happened today so i'm very happy to see this is that bitcoin did close above the 50 day moving average that's the purple line you see on the chart here now this is a very very important line for really saying okay we're still in a a bullish phase and we're still in the bull run we're still in the bull market the bear market's not coming anytime soon that is my belief that's what i'm seeing in the charts right now but remember even in 2017 during that epic bull run that we had we did see quite a few dips under the 50 day moving average so these things aren't you know crazy events they do happen but it is very encouraging at this time to see that we did just barely, just by a, just a razor's edge, we did close above the 50 day moving average. So that right there is good to see. Of course, now we are starting to build up a green candle for this daily move. So these tend to be great opportunities when you see these assets, whether it be Bitcoin or any other cryptocurrencies, coming back down to test their 50 day moving averages. It tends to be a very interesting time to look at buying the dip right? Or potentially, you know, putting in a long or something like that. We're going to talk about uh, some things you need to know before running out and trading futures here in a second. But you can see on the chart here that during this particular bull run that we've been having, we've had one, two, three, and now four touches, just touches, not breaking under. Well, except of course this one now, but just touches of the 50 day moving average. Every single one of those opportunities has been a great time to buy Bitcoin. I suspect that this current dip is not going to be an exception to that rule. So that's pretty cool to see. And also just for some perspective for you, because I think this is really important. Sometimes people kind of get lost in the, the moment you stop seeing the forest from the trees. Bitcoin is still above $50,000. Ethereum is still above $2,000. Cardano is still above a dollar. Dogecoin's doing, doing the Dogecoin stuff, you know. It's just crazy, guys. So the market still looking fantastic. A lot of coins are near their all-time highs right now. We still, of course, do have the laggards in the market that haven't quite caught up in terms of hitting those new highs. Litecoin and others, of course, are the ones that we're really looking at here when we start talking about that, but those will eventually catch up as well. But just new all-time highs for most coins. Even on days like today, we still see coins like VeChain just going totally insane, up 40% today. I mean, you can see all this green on the 24-hour. There was some heavy, heavy dip buying that went on, which is very impressive. See, in fact, if you kind of zoom out here and you think about the seven days, we did see that big crash yesterday, but look at the seven day. Bitcoin's only down 5% on the seven day. Most coins are in the green. Litecoin's in the green. VeChain's in the green. Chainlink's in the green on the Chainlink 2.0 news, which we'll cover in a video probably tomorrow morning. So very, very bullish markets still don't get shaken out by the, the craziness that can sometimes happen. By the way, if you want to earn a safe and simple passive income on your cryptocurrencies, get yourself a BlockFi account. You can earn 6% on your Bitcoin, 5.25% on your Ethereum, 5.5% on Chainlink, 6.5% on Litecoin, and 8.6% on USDC dollar stable coins. Just use the link down below in the description to sign up for your account and you'll get up to a $250 Bitcoin bonus. So do check it out. It's one of the easiest ways to earn a passive income in crypto 
Now, there's some big news stories that have happened over the last couple of days. Now, we talked about some of the big FUD stories that all seem to come out at basically the same time the last couple of days. But this is something that's very interesting that happened. So the hash rate of Bitcoin dropped dramatically by almost 50% yesterday. I think it was like 48% or something. This happened because one region in China had a massive massive power outage due to some uh, disaster event at one of their coal mines. So this just so clearly shows how incredibly centralized the mining operations, or at least a majority of the mining operations for Bitcoin are. I mean, one region in China shuts down and the hash rate for Bitcoin drops by 50%. Now, Obviously, the fears around this probably also helped contribute to the shakiness in the market yesterday. Certainly, some people would have taken advantage of that situation, knowing that people would have been watching this, knowing that people would have been spooked by this kind of news. But you have to keep it real. Bitcoin, even losing all of that hash rate, is still unimaginably secure. Like, it just it's hard to contemplate just how secure the Bitcoin network is. It is the biggest, most powerful computer network in the world by just miles and miles. So nothing to worry about there. Although it is, of course, something to keep in mind that there is this heavy concentration of miners in just one tiny little region. So I don't like that. I'd like to see that more decentralized in terms of a global network. We are seeing that happen. We are seeing, for example, American miners stepping up the pressure, buying massive amounts of machinery, so we're seeing a lot of new mines coming in across the USA. So we'll see more of a decentralization of this moving forward. But this other China news is very, very interesting. So the central bank of China's deputy governor said this about Bitcoin. He says, we believe that Bitcoin should play a major role in the future, either as an investment tool or as an alternative investment. That's crazy. That's the deputy governor of the central bank of China saying good things about Bitcoin. Now, China, the government has been a relatively cryptophobic government in a lot of ways. They've done a lot of um, heavy regulations, heavy restrictions, making it very, very difficult for people to access cryptocurrencies. Uh, unsurprisingly, they're, part of it's because of the insane scams we've seen. I can't remember the name, but there was a coin, uh, scam in 2019. It was one of the biggest scams ever, made BitConnect look like child's play. It was such a big scam. It was almost all based out of China. And of course, you know, using cryptocurrencies again. So just, it's understandable why China's government has taken such a tough stance. Not that I like it, obviously, but I think that these kind of words that we're seeing here might be China starting to warm up to Bitcoin again. The central bank of China's uh, deputy governor, he doesn't just come out and say this kind of stuff without it being intentional. So it is pretty interesting. Maybe we'll see a bit of a thawing of regulations in China. And if that happens, if China kind of makes some reversals, regulates their markets, makes it easier for people to access cryptocurrencies in China, China is already by and far the biggest cryptocurrency market in the world and it's, all, it's almost all a black market which is insane them making things all legal all official bringing in positive regulations to make it easy for people to access cryptocurrencies that would be massive that would be massive and next i want to talk real quick about this story here so one million crypto traders saw nearly 10 billion dollars in liquidations during the big crash yesterday so Look, I just want to say this real quick. Leverage trading, it's a tool. It's an advanced tool for advanced traders. Even advanced traders, as you can see, I mean, a lot of these guys may not have been advanced traders, but you can see the liquidations. That's $10 billion in just money. It's gone. It's gone. That money is gone. So if you are trading on leverage, please just remember to always manage that risk. Keep your position sizings very low. Use isolated margins so that you're not getting exposure to lose your entire account on these kind of days. If you're using cross margin, that's exactly what can happen. Never go all in. Don't use high leverage, right? This is your trading account. This should be money that you're just 100% okay with losing. Don't put your life savings in. Don't put your rent money in any of that stuff. Trading futures, it can be a high reward game, but it is very, very high risk. You can see, as happened yesterday, $10 billion in liquidations. The average person lost $10,000. So a million traders lost approximately $10,000 a piece. 
that's a lot of money down the drain. So if you are trading futures, use low rever leverage, manage that risk, be careful. Now let's talk about some altcoin news. So this is pretty interesting. So somebody uh, on Twitter basically said, um, brought up, of course, Curve Finance and mentioned Polygon and saying, hey, basically, when will Curve Finance be coming over to Polygon? Polygon, of course, is the premier layer two scaling solution for Ethereum right now. Curve Finance, they wrote back soon, which is very, very awesome to see because right now we have Aave, which is like the third biggest decentralized finance protocol. Curve Finance is also one of the biggest decentralized finance protocols on Ethereum. So in case you're not familiar with Curve Finance, basically they let you do low slippage trades between stable coins or between different Bitcoins, things like this. So if you wanted to, for example, trade 100,000 USDT for 100,000 USDC, you want to do that over on Curve Finance because you're probably going to get the best rate for it. By using that, if you're doing it on like Uniswap or something, you could be losing thousands of dollars in that trade. So Curve Finance is the place to go for that. You can also, for example, swap wrapped Bitcoin for REN Bitcoin at, again, very, very close to the actual rates, which is a really, really awesome tool. So seeing that come to Polygon would be very, very exciting. Now, next, I want to talk a little bit about Elrond, our boy, our boy Elrond. He is coming up big time. So there's two big things we have to talk about with Elrond today. The first is the Myar Exchange. So they are going to be doing their own decentralized exchange. So the Myar app, it's the uh, Elrond wallet, essentially. So they're going to be doing a decentralized exchange. Basically, this is going to be Elrond's Uniswap. Now, if you are in E gold token holder, so that is the Elrond token. Well, you are going to be getting these tokens for free. 100% of the supply is being distributed out to the community, which is crazily awesome. The snapshot for that begins today, today. So make sure you have your E gold tokens in your wallet. So if you have any questions about that, go and read the uh, Medium article that they wrote about. They got all the details there that you need to know. But this is going to be, I think, a big deal. Elrond. A very bullish on this cryptocurrency, been bullish on it for a long time, still have a big bag of it. So seeing them bring out their decentralized exchange soon is very, very exciting. And other Elrond news is the Myar launch pad coming up. So this is probably going to be essential in terms of helping them build out that um, ecosystem. So we've seen the success of like Pokestarter, for example, which was a big polka dot, still is, of course, a big polka dot launch pad. Seeing the Meyer launch pad come out, this is basically going to allow all these teams to come in, all this venture capital fundraising to happen for the Elrond ecosystem. The Elrond ecosystem is already impressively large with some partnerships with some crazy people. But this will allow for an ecosystem to really start taking off, to really start being built. So I'm very, very excited to see that happen. And of course, very excited to see what the Myar Launchpad tokens are going to be. What kind of DeFi stuff, what kind of NFT stuff are we going to see coming to Elrond? And the final bit of news for today is that Daffy has released a major product. So in case you don't remember Daffy, we talked about it on the channel here a few weeks ago. So Daffy is a protocol that allows you to basically be able to reward long-term users and networks. They do this via using synthetic assets. So kind of the idea is that they want to find ways to bring in incentives for long-term users in a network because so often what you see with these networks, you have a massive amount of rewards up front and then it's harder to retain those users for a long-term situation. Daffy is trying to fix that situation and they have just released their product launch. So this is really, really cool. So this is the first Daffy synthetic platform. It's going to be going live well this month, so it hasn't been released yet, but it's going live very, very soon. So this is the first major part of their roadmap. So they're going to be bringing out the D tokens. So they're going to be having the synthetic D tokens for existing cryptocurrency assets. So they're working with Bitcoin, Ethereum, and Chainlink. So that is really, really cool to see. So you can actually, as a user, then come in, mint these D tokens, which then, of course, pegged to the underlying tokens of the network. So creating a new class of synthetic assets for the most popular cryptocurrencies in the industry. So really, really cool to see them actually finally coming out with a product launch here. Of course, not that they've 
come to the market such a long time ago. So it's actually a pretty short amount of time from product release, uh, from token sale to get to product release. So very, very cool to see them finally releasing the news. Anyway, never a dull day in the crypto markets. Always so much going on. All these companies, they keep moving forward. They keep developing, they keep innovating, keep bringing out new technology. Bitcoin just keeps on trucking along. Nothing can stop it. Hash rate drops. Nobody cares. FUD, Bitcoin doesn't care. It just keeps on moving forward. Your question for today. Do you think that China is likely to bring out some positive regulations soon? Do you think that this um, bit of news from the deputy governor from the Central Bank of China could actually be a, a harbinger for potentially much more exciting times where China basically comes roaring back into the market, pushing this bull market higher than anyone can even freaking imagine? Or is it just a bit of, meh, a nothing burger? <laughs> Let me know down below in the comments section. Thanks so much for watching today's video and peace out till next time.